Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about triangle trigonometry. The study of trig ultimately starts with the study of a right triangle. We know that from the Pythagorean theorem that we have this relationship between the sides of the triangle, that is, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the sides adjacent to the right angle, and c is the hypotenuse. But if we have this relationship between sides, what can we say about the angles? Well, it's a right triangle, so we know that we have a right angle, but we have these other unknown angles that we can call alpha and beta, but all we really know about the angles is that they sum to 180 degrees, and this alone is not enough to determine anything about alpha or beta. But this is what motivates trigonometry, because we can ultimately look at the sides a, b, and c, and those are going to help us make some deductions about the angles inside. To begin the study of trig, we first learn the six basic trigonomic ratios. We're going to start with a right angle, and we're going to fix one of the angles that we'll call theta. When you're looking at a triangle, you're generally looking at exactly one of the angles, namely not the right angle part of one of these triangles, and then you start moving forward with respect to theta. The side of the triangle that sits opposite to theta is just called the opposite. The side that sits next to theta is called the adjacent side, and then the longest side of the triangle is still called the hypotenuse. Now every time we refer to one of these three sides, we're referring to the length of that side. To begin with our definitions, the sine of theta is defined as the opposite over the adjacent side. Cosine of theta is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of theta is defined as opposite over adjacent. And these are the three fundamental ratios of trigonometry. Moving forward, we also have that cosecant of theta, denoted CSC, is hypotenuse over opposite. We have that secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, and we have that cotangent of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the three ratios on the bottom are just reciprocals of the trig ratios that sit directly above them. If you get stuck on memorizing these, you've probably heard the saying SOHCAHTOA, which is a way to memorize the order of all the ratios on the top, sine, cosine, and tangent. To be a little bit more precise about those other ratios on the bottom, we have these relations. Cosecant theta is equal to one over sine of theta, secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine of theta, tangent of theta turns out to be sine theta over cosine theta, then cotangent, which is 1 over tangent, turns out to be cosine theta over sine theta. Let's go ahead and do some examples. Given the triangle with legs 3 and 4 and an angle theta adjacent to 4 and the hypotenuse of x, find all six trigonomic ratios. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what x is. Finding x is just a direct result of the Pythagorean theorem, so when we square and sum both sides of the triangles, we get that x has to be equal to 5. So I can rewrite my triangle below and start computing these trig ratios. Remember, all six of these ratios are computed with respect to our angle theta. Just by using the definitions, I can write all six ratios as so. Sine of theta is 3 over 5, cosine of theta is 4 over 5, tangent of theta is 3 over 4, cosecant theta is 5 over 3, secant theta is 5 over 4, and cotangent theta is 4 over 3. In this next example, we're given this triangle with an angle of 40, a side of 4, and a hypotenuse of c, and we want to write c in terms of a trig ratio. So we need to somehow capture c in a trig ratio, and to do that we need to see what sides are available to us. We have 40 degrees, opposite the 40 degrees we have a side of 4, and we have the hypotenuse of c. One of the trig ratios that involves an opposite side and the hypotenuse is the sine ratio. So we can deduce that sine of 40 degrees has to be equal to 4 over c. All this stuff to do is explicitly solve for c in terms of a sine function. Doing this, I see that c times sine of 40 degrees is equal to 4, which tells me that c is equal to 4 over sine of 40 degrees, but we can use that last ratio and realize that c has to then be equal to 4 times cosecant of 40 degrees. And this is because cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over sine of theta for any angle theta. For our next example, suppose that theta is an acute angle of a right triangle such that cotangent of theta is equal to 1 half. We want to find secant theta and sine of theta. The first thing that we should do is draw the picture and try to sketch out what this triangle could look like. I'll place my angle theta at the top here and then realize that if cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over 2, which is equal to adjacent over opposite, I will make my adjacent side equal to 1 and my opposite side equal to 2. 
Now that I know the shorter sides of this triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem is solve for the hypotenuse. When I do this, I see that my hypotenuse C has length of square root of 5. Now that I have all the sides of this triangle, I can find the need to trig ratios of secant and sine. I find that secant of theta is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent, which is root 5 over 1, which simplifies to root 5, and that sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to 2 over root 5, which simplifies to 2 times root 5 over 5 after I rationalize the denominator. For our last example, we'll do more of a word problem. Suppose that a lineman attached a support cable to a 40-foot telephone pole. If the angle between the pole and the cable is 40 degrees, how long is the cable? Just like last time, it's a good idea to draw the picture. To get an accurate picture, we have to make sure that the angle is in the right place. Since my 40 degree angle has been between the pole and the cable, it should be placed at the top of the triangle. The adjacent side of 40 degrees is 40 feet, because that's the length of the telephone pole, and we're just going to label the hypotenuse with C because that represents our cable. So, to bring all this together, we realize that we have an adjacent side and a hypotenuse with respect to our angle. This tells us that we should be using either cosine of 40 degrees or secant of 40 degrees. However, secant is a more efficient trig ratio here because it puts the hypotenuse, C, in the denominator. So, when we calculate secant of 40 degrees, we see that that's equal to hypotenuse over adjacent, and this means that secant of 40 degrees is equal to C over 40 feet. Therefore, when we solve for C, we see that C is equal to 40 times secant of 40 degrees, which is our final answer. Normally, you would need a calculator to figure out what secant of 40 degrees is, but in general, this is an acceptable answer.